Welcome back to the Diecast Museum, which may be the last time you're here in 2023. I'll see you in 2024 though, but today I've got some really cool stuff I wanna share with you. Some purchases I've made over the last couple weeks and maybe a month. Mostly green light is what we're gonna be looking at. I think actually entirely green light. I'm gonna make an executive decision right now, green light. We've got so much green light product to look at, 164 scale. Extremely realistic, awesome die cast with a lot of cool new models. And one of those models being this 1990 Chevy Suburban. Absolutely awesome. Can't wait to open that one up with you guys. I've got some uh, Dodge Ram first generation as well. I'm going to be saving the big bulk of that for a uh, uh, Dodge Ram specific video also in the new year. So we won't be opening up more than a couple Dodge Ram first generations. Hobby Shop, very cool, love Hobby Shop. This is Series 15, I believe that's the newest one, time of filming. And I've got five out of the six cars, all the really cool ones. Got some really cool vehicles in that collection. Um, and I've got some exclusives. Bronco. I also have a lot of just regular release stuff including the low riders. I'm not sure if we're gonna get all the low riders open in this video, because I've got most of those as well. Going to try and limit it to 20 vehicles. That's kind of hard to do when I've got about 70 to 100 to open, and that's just the green light. Still got all the Hot Wheels car culture cars to open. That's about, oh, 14 sets of those, times five cars. <laughs> M2, found more M2 at the local Walmart. Uh, I've got some racing champions, Hot Wheels, awesome new Matchbox coming out this year. I don't know if you guys have been seeing some of the Matchbox castings. The cheapest cars I buy in my collection right now is Matchbox at $1.48 Canadian. But I am very impressed with, uh, especially the, I think it's a 1987 Volvo 240 DL or something in baby blue. Very cool four-door car. I digress. We're looking at Greenlight today. Let's get into it. Check it out. We've got something from just about every coolest line of green light 164 scale die cast out in December 2023. That's Hobby Shop Series 15, All Terrain Series 15. We've got the Great Outdoors Bronco as well as an exclusive. And half the Blue Collar Collection Series 12. Mostly trucks so far, but I also have some very cool California Low Riders. Series three, I've got five out of the six cars here, only missing the 55 Chevy Bel Air. Everything is ready to come out of the packaging. We're gonna take a close look at it loose here on the parking mat next to my Matchbox Volvo 240 four-door sedan. Let's go ahead and start with a vehicle that I have been anxiously awaiting ever since I heard that this was being made by Greenlight. That is the 1990 Chevrolet Suburban in this fantastic gloss black and bright red side panel. It's got a lot of nice chrome accessories, a push bar, some fog lamps, and uh, it has the drop tailgate on this truck. Looks like some BF, uh, no, sorry, I was gonna say BF Goodrich, but it's got Goodyear Wrangler tires on it, and those nice big uh, eight, eight hole chrome rims. So in this collection, there were six vehicles, as is typical with most Greenlight series. Uh, I did not buy all of them, so what you see is what I have here. I think that these are the best castings from the mix. And wow, check this truck out. This is certainly the biggest. Check it out. Fantastic paint job on this truck. Wow, just look how shiny it is. And it is a heavy unit. Very nice clear windows. Superb details. Gonna go in for a little bit of zoomage here. This truck is brand new on the lot. 1990 as it does not have a plate. Here that is a show truck. Wow. Nice solid die cast unit. There's the name of the truck. Nicely detailed suspension. Fantastic. And of course, we've got a roll test for everything. Wow, smooth. Smooth as can be. 
Here's a Matchbox car, rolls nicely too, but uh, weighs about one-tenth the weight of this Suburban. Nicely uh, scaled vehicles together though, just, I know this is not uh, really Greenlight specific, but nor is this video really meant to be. Just nicely scaled vehicles in the collection. I would say this little Volvo is probably an accurate 164 scale by Matchbox with some great details. Just a random little matchbox. I couldn't believe how nice it looked just hanging on the pegs there for matchbox really coming along with some nicely detailed models. And uh, I don't know why I threw it in here. I guess it's just because it brought it up in the intro, so I couldn't help myself. The next truck we're going to look at is another one that I was anxiously awaiting and, of course, could not find in the wild. That was Hobby Shop Series 15 1983 Dodge Ram Power Ram 250 with Backpacker. So of this series, I got five out of the six. Some I had to buy on eBay, including this truck. The one I didn't buy was the 2010 Shelby GT500. Just, I don't know. I've got a lot of those cars already, so I didn't really buy it. And I typically only buy 1990s and older castings. So here we have the Hobby Shop. You're going to see the other four vehicles, minus the Mustang. And uh, look at this truck so heavy, it blasted right through the... Uh, packaging i guess before uh i forget i gotta take out the accessory but here it is nicely detailed very nicely detailed absolutely beautiful paint job and the quality on green lights these days it has come so far i mean it's always been a quality brand and uh, long since my one of my favorites absolutely one of my favorite brands of die cast to collect but lately i'm really finding it is probably the most enjoyable castings to collect from Greenlight is because they all seem to be very high quality and there's a huge huge um, database of different castings they're making as well as ones they've already created over the years and then the little accessories are cool too the little backpackers <laughs> look at he's even got a face on now that's new so the this is new for Greenlight I'm pretty sure I don't think we saw faces on the little figurines in the past. So quite excited about that. Just adds that much more level of realism to these vehicles. I mean, check out. It looks like it really got shrunk down. A miniature situation just got shrunk right down. I'm just going to grab one of my older green light uh, figurines from over on the table. They had good detailed face sculpts, but there wasn't any eyeballs drawn on it and teeth and smiles as you can see now it's just kind of funny how that all happened anyways we're going to keep moving on fantastic stuff green light and uh next vehicle we're going to just actually go through some more trucks i've got the hobby shop 2018 ford f-150 xlt with customs officer so this is another heavy truck newer casting and why am I opening them all up like this with you guys? Well, it gives you a chance to see the packaging so you can identify them more readily if you're shopping in the store. There's the sunglasses on the custom off, customs officer. And also, just to show you that these vehicles are coming out of the package in beautiful, beautiful condition. So it's kind of a quality, uh, quality review as well as just the uh, awesomeness of the castings. So, pretty cool. Very heavy truck. Another nice roller. Got lots of good rollers. This one's got a little bit of a wobble, but still rolls nice. Uh, I'm not really going to try and keep these in order, and we're going to fill this parking mat up probably before I run out of things to look at with you. Check this out. Another new casting from Greenlight is this 1946 Dodge Power Wagon. So, I did the uh, Power Wagon review video of uh, M2 mostly just uh, about, about a week and a half ago or so. This would have been nice for my storytelling, but uh, that video was getting a bit painful to do all the research as it was. Now, I in my research on that video, I did look up some information on this power wagon, and what an interesting old wartime truck. One of the first wartime vehicles that went right into civilian use post-war. That would be World War II. Just wicked how Greenlight captured the details of this truck. Uh, it has mirrors, a winch on it, a big push bumper. 
beautiful paint job like this is like hot wheels rlc quality paint job in my opinion and a nicely done chassis all painted diamond plate very cool wow just fantastic i'm thrilled with these vehicles right now uh from all terrain we're going to just jump back and forth i'm going to open up trucks and then cars i guess that's what i'm doing 1988 Ford F-150 XLT Lariat. This one appears to have some off-road tires on it as it is sitting up rather high. Oh, we've got a little misalignment of the tire. Not a big deal. It's just off the rim, I believe. There we go. And just like that, brand new again. There's the BF Goodrich tires. We commonly see those on green light vehicles as well as the Goodyear tires. Beautiful details all the way around. I don't know if the hood opens. I don't think so. It's just a separately cast piece, so you can really get that uh, realistic hood line around the front. I mean, wow. Check it out. It has the uh, little transparent lens headlights and another beautiful rolling vehicle. So we're just going to push that little Matchbox Volvo out of the way and get a good line of trucks started here. Very cool. I oh, I just can't stop mooning over them. And then we're going to go over to Blue Collar. These are new in the store for me at this time, Series 12. Uh, I haven't found the whole collection of these, but also I don't think... Uh, I think I passed on the Z71 or Z71 and the 56 Ford F100, as I do have a lot of those castings already. But this 1975 Ford F100 Ranger XLT really looks good. Very period correct. And a nice heavy detailed casting with that removable bed cap, box cap. So, so nice. And of course, these trucks all have rubber tires. We've got a little bit of a wheel lockup, but... Axles are rotating freely, so it's just the weight of the truck, I guess. It seems to be rolling pretty good. And that looks pretty neat over there. Okay, we're going to uh, just move a few things around here so we don't lose the focus as the camera lens tends to go, kind of jump in and out when I take the scenery away from the background. So I've changed the scenery a little bit. We've got California Lowriders. Going to be the last cars to open up. I've still got a few hobby shop cars that are really cool to look at as well with you. And these Broncos as well as some more blue collar. Let's start with the Great Outdoors Bronco Series 3. I didn't pick up these vehicles this time around other than the Bronco 96 XLT. There was quite a few to choose from, of course. Five others. And uh, mainly all castings I have many copies of already. Very particular for the Broncos, though. I love these old Broncos. And the main reason why I don't collect them is just I'm not a huge fan of these holes drilled through the roof to uh, mount the rooftop camper. And uh, oh, I always struggle to get these things out. Given that I display my vehicles in Plano cases, they won't fit in the compartment with the camp camper on the top of the roof. So that, that's how it goes. Then you got the little ladder too, which I guess you just lean that off, uh, lean that off the side of the tent, right in that little notch there, something like that. Anyways, I just put all these in a drawer. I don't really have any real use for displaying them. And although I don't like that there's holes drilled in the roof, I just like this truck enough that I wanted it in my collection despite that fact. And it's got a very period correct kind of color to it as well so that looks good jump seat spare tire and here we have the same model this one's a 93 the last one was a 96 interesting it has a kind of a black or deep metallic blue version of this truck on the background art maybe for contrast with the white bronco lettering now this one's a hobby 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 exclusive so you would have to go to a hobby store or online to buy this and it's a beauty what a beautiful truck eh 
So that is really nice. We're going to get this one out. And it has larger tires than the Great Outdoors version. It has the jump seat. Removable cap, of course. Spare tire. And really, really nice wheels. Now, I haven't mentioned this yet either, but in addition to all the quality control improvements, there is just a quality improvement overall with green light like I have never seen before. Every model that's coming out here is just fantastic condition. No flaws whatsoever. And um, look at these wheels. There's no flashing on any of these wheels. And these are very intricate cast wheels to mold. None of the uh, slots or holes are filled in with any flashing, which is pretty common on models with this scale and level of detail. Let's just go back to that Ford truck. I just can't believe it. Like, look at that. They look amazing. They've come so far with this. Uh, really good job. So those, uh, those back kind of caps are loose, but these are still fully functional vehicles. As long as you don't go off-roading with them and you could put a spot of glue or tape if you wanted to hold them down yourself i just like to be able to take them on and off of course and kind of keep them in the collection okay we're not going to lose the parts there but we're going to move on to another truck the 91 gmc jimmy sle i do have this one in my collection so apologies if you've seen it in a review video previously maybe not all that long ago given it's a fairly new collection but in case not, here it is again. Nice big GMC trucks. Again, a separately cast hood, but it does not open. I'll take the closed hoods with uh, the trade-off being this extreme level of quality. Uh, I, that's fine with me if that's what it needs to be. I still like that the hoods are separately cast. And of course, any of the castings that they can make with opening hoods... That's terrific, but as we know from all manufacturers, not just Greenlight, opening hoods tend to be kind of a problem for vehicles of this scale. They often don't open all the way, or if they do, they have to have like a big, huge gap up near the firewall uh, in order to facilitate the hood to open, or some big, weird levers that don't look very realistic. It's nice to have the little engines in there to look at, but, you know, some castings lend for that better than others and uh, I can understand the choices they have to make in order to do that 2000 Jeep Cherokee Sport next from the same series blue collar 12 uh, really nice probably a factory color I'm not sure what this color is kind of like a slate gray of some sort with a hint of blue in it and um, it has a plow so this truck is equipped for Winter snow plowing. Another nicely painted base on it. Those factory aluminum five spoke wheels. Very common on Jeeps of this era. Nice rolling unit. The plow is high enough even that it can almost get right up onto the parking mat, which has a bit of a lip. And the plow is set into travel mode by the looks of it. We're going to have to make room there, fellas, if you don't mind. Pardon me. Okay, we've got no more trucks to look at, but we've got some really cool cars. Lots of cool cars. Check out all these big old four-door cars from the 70s and 80s, and even one from the 60s. Well, actually, we've got a second car from the 60s right here. So we'll start with that since that's where we are. Hobby Shop Series 15. So nice that it comes with an accessory. Sometimes it's a little figure. Other times it's a set of tires or a gas pump. And I've got a nice little collection of these gas pumps now which are pretty cool to put into your dioramas. Now this car does have an opening hood. It's one of Greenlight's older castings and it is an absolute gem. It's a beautiful casting and look how clean it is. I've never seen it so clean and especially in white. One of the things about the Hobby Shop series for me is just, I really enjoy this series because it's an interesting mix of real life vehicles with real life kind of period correct paint jobs and now we get a chance to critique the white walls often white wall tires on this scale of model can be rather hard for the manufacturer to get perfectly uh, symmetrical and look at these these are about as good as it can possibly get beautiful hubcaps let's look at the, the motor 
Oh, it's even got a chrome intake air cleaner on it. Isn't that they've oh they've even painted the little vents for the uh the fan. I think that's the fan vents for the anyways, you know what I'm talking about. Just a gorgeous amount of detail. And let's just go in for a major zoom. Can we do that? Is that gonna work? Yeah, I was just kind of playing around with the camera, but one zoom level is plenty fine. It's a nice roller, I'm pretty sure. All the wheels are rolling. Yeah, just doesn't like to go in reverse as much. Anyways, it rolls forwards beautifully. Um, I think we'll look at one more car from the 60s. We're going to just jump around a bit here. I've only got Hobby Shop and Lowriders series vehicles left to share with you. So this one here, I could not find in the store as much as I wanted to. I had to buy this one on eBay as well from a favored seller. And... Uh, just a gorgeous, gorgeous 63 Chevy Impala. Very Cheech and Chong up in smoke. Stylized, in my opinion. If you've watched that movie, it's a classic. You gotta watch it. To see this car, if nothing else, check out the matte finish on it. Oh my goodness, this is beautiful. Wow, beautiful patina. All that pinstriping as well. We're going for a little step up in the zoomage. VF Goodrich tires. My goodness, the paint is phenomenal on this car. So it is the same vehicle that we just looked at, but check it out. We'll do a side by side in just a second. And look at the interior on these vehicles. Wow fantastic side by side oh it's almost the same vehicle we got the uh, b pillar here on this particular model and other than that front bumpers and grills oh do we have a difference we do have a minor difference another beautiful thing about green light the attention to detail model year specific is so high look at the the difference on the little push bumpers here Versus this model, very similar, but not quite the same. Back bumper appears to be the same. Two taillights instead of the uh, three on each side. So a different casting entirely. And uh, very nice, very nice cars. You wouldn't even know those roofs are plastic. That's one piece with the windshield. That's how come it's so clean. But the paint is just phenomenal. Overused adjectives abound in this video. I'm so impressed. Um, okay, let's go on to yet another car. Maybe we'll go in order of oldest to newest. I was going to open up the uh, Dodge Diplomat next, but I think we'll go for a 71 Monte Carlo. And here it is. 1971 Monte Carlo. Nice and shiny once again. Opening hood on this model. White wall tires and exquisite detailed hubcaps or are those wheels. Got a small little delamination of chrome on the back bumper, but it's not a flaw really. Just a little bit of chrome missing. Not a big deal. Check that out. The white walls are perfect. Okay, so the camera is trying to find the focus again. That's why I got to keep... Cars in the background, but lost the diplomat. Pardon me. And this one has a metal roof with the plastic windshield in. You can see the slight difference there with that kind of mold windshield, but it still looks great. It's just kind of something to notice. Really nicely opening hood on this model. So you can just see the difference in uh, how they mold those rooftops. For this casting, it is sometimes used as a convertible. I'm not sure that this one has ever been a convertible. So that's probably why. Single headlights on the front, pinstriping, lots to look at on this model. Dare I say that rolls as well as a Hot Wheel? Whoa, don't you bump into each other. We may have to put these on the super six lane speedway raceway thingamajing. Okay, next car is a 72, 72 
Cadillac. Sedan DeVille four-door. This thing is a land yacht of a vehicle. I have been anxiously awaiting to open this car as well. It's right up there with the uh, first-gen Dodge Rams and the 90 Chevy Suburban for me. I love these big old castings, and they are fantastically well represented here. Huge, monstrous cars, both in real life and in cast. Now, you can see, again, you think the hood's going to open because it's actually a separately cast piece for you customizers out there. Or, uh, you know, you want to make a parts car, a junkyard car with the hood open or off. You can do that easily. You don't need to get out your Dremel and cut this car up. But for the sake of realism, I'm supposing this hood doesn't open. Because you can see the windshield line. That would be a tough hood to have open up. Whereas a hood like this one here, where it meets the firewall, it seems to be a little easier to do. For, <coughs> excuse me, for model car companies. Anyways, we're looking at this model as it is, and it is just great. White wall tires again, dog dish hubcaps, nice simple white paint job, really like that. And uh, easy to read name on the base plate, as well as decent details, and the clarity of the windshield, side windows. You can see that really nicely high detail interior through those windows without a problem unbelievable okay yet another cadillac i can never have too many cadillacs here's a 73 coupe de ville and it appears to be kind of a burnt auburn red perhaps i'm just making names up here as i go i guess um we'll do a side by side of the two door to a four door this is the first sign of anything i'm not i'm not complaining but just a little bit of that's the first time I've had to take the rag out at all. Not even have to, but just to look at the depth of the paint on this car. Incredible. And again, we have perfect white wall tires all the way around. I don't know of any, I'm going to be bold here. I don't know of any other 164 scale manufacturer of die cast that has managed to get every single white wall tire on each of their cars perfectly round. And here we're opening up you know, car after car, just randomly, these are 2023 release green light castings, and the quality has jumped to a new level of highs. This is setting a bar very high for all die cast manufacturers. They're going to have to keep on their A game to even try to hold abreast to what green light is producing. We're uh, going to open up an 83 Dodge Diplomat now. Yes, it's time. Following this, we've got two Chevy Caprices. Well, one's a Caprice, one's in Palace. Same, similar castings, but for now, we're looking at the Dodge Diplomat with women in dress. With a woman. Singular, not plural. And there she is. Does she get a face? She does. She's got eyes. She has eyes. It's not just a single colored face like the old figure castings were. She's got lipstick. She's looking down. Something, maybe there's a spider on her lapel. Is that a spider on your lapel? Ah! Okay. She looks a little scared anyways. Or angry. I don't know. She's got some sort of expression and it's, it's a good one. So, here it is, the Dodge Diplomat. Now, this casting has had its struggles in the early years of its development from Greenlight. Uh, we we're seeing no paint issues on those side pillars, as was a problem on certain models of the Diplomat in years past. Not always, but uh, it appeared that there was originally like a machine that would pick it up from here and move it while the paint was still wet. But clearly, the paint is being given due time to dry, cure, and shine right up to a super clean. And look at the, look at the luxurious satin finish of the roof. Those bright, white, thick, white wall tires as they properly came on this car. Perfectly round. This is unbelievable. Unbelievable. Very, very nice looking car. Super, super realistic. Just pull in behind that 73. We were going to do a side-by-side, -side, I had said, of these two. So, dare I even put these cars one on top of each other. Huge, huge cars. Yeah, green light paint is sturdy, though. I've 
even play with models you occasionally find in yard sales are it takes a lot to chip a green light car i mean yes you can lose chrome bumpers and bits and bobs if you're smashing them around and let your kids play with them but uh the paint on these cars is solid so let's look at an 89 chevrolet caprice classic before we look at the 81 chevrolet impala capital cab which is awesome i wish i'd bought more than one but that was an ebay purchase this one was uh found in the wild I did not realize when I've been shopping all these cars just how far Greenlight had come with the manufacturing process. Otherwise, uh, I'm kind of glad I didn't know that at the time. Otherwise, I would have been buying more than one. And why, I don't know. I just, I get super excited about seeing this level of uh, greatness in the castings, especially cars that I really like. Wow, that's a beauty. Nice bright red. And the bases, even though they're not painted, they are glossed over, glazed over with a Zamax sort of finish. I'm not sure if that's a proprietary word for Mattel, but it's like that. You know what I mean? It doesn't get frosty. You don't see your fingerprints in it three years down the road. Hobby Shop Series 15, the final car and probably one of the best. 81 Chevy Impala, as I said. And we got this uh, man in suit. So we're going to take the man out. This is a great little model. We've seen this guy before. I think he's actually over in my uh, dealership diorama presently. Yeah. He's ready to go for a taxi ride. And here it is. Now this, this car has many model year specific items to note, including the recessed headlights on the older models. And we've lost we've lost the last car in the background, so we're gonna just have to keep a hand up here to look at it. We've got a license plate on it. I like when there's a license plate, especially on the taxis. Nevada plates. And a very authentic tan interior. Check out the steering wheel. It really feels like we've just shrunk down the real car from a movie or a TV series or something, and here it is right before your eyes. In my hands it's uh quite cool and if it's in your hands all the better all the better for you well this is my early uh dare i say christmas present to myself i really wanted to open up these cars with you guys and i cannot wait to get these into the rest of the museum yes it would have been nice to still have the junkyard to put them all out here for a little while but you know what it's nice to see them on the wall next to other shiny green light cars and uh, making good use of the diorama here. At least the plan is to. We've already got that one kind of little car dealership set up and we'll do more of that soon. Right now, I'm going to uh, go get myself a cup of tea and wet my parched whistle. If you're after any of these, happy hunting. It's been nice to hang out with you guys. We'll see you in the next video.